Susan with Susan Anyway, and today I want to show you something that I have been working on. Well, I've been thinking about it for a long time, and I finally did it, and that is to skirt one of the plastic folding tables that is in my workroom. Um, I store a lot of things under there, and I don't really like seeing all of the stuff that I stored. So I finally made a skirt and I have another table that I need to skirt. So I'm going to walk you through the process of making your own table skirt if you would like to. Okay, so here is the table skirt that I made for this plastic folding table. And I used the back of this bolt because I knew that I wanted something very neutral. And I was a little concerned that the floral pattern would come through when I used the back of the fabric, but it, it didn't, you don't see it. But let me just show you what, what I did, what was important to me. I was concerned with this amount of fabric that it would not, that it would fall off the table, that, I couldn't figure out a way to hold it up. So what I ended up doing, here, I don't know if you can see, I glued uh, Velcro um, hook and loop uh, pieces just at, let's see, I think there's three on the front. I have one on this corner, one on this corner, and then one I just wrapped around this far in the back. Um, and that way, um, I didn't have the full weight of the fabric on the table as the glue was drying. I don't know if that makes sense, but all I had to adhere to the table were these little pieces of Velcro. And I used E6000, um, and that, that has worked really well. This has been on for a couple weeks now. Um, and has not pulled away at all. Um, so that that's one aspect that was important to me. The other aspect was that I made little separate panels so that I could easily lift up, well, easily lift up the skirt and get to everything that's underneath. So you can see here's the back of the fabric and I have um, a lot of fabric under here and some other um, items and you know I'm not a great seamstress I just did everything very simply because the only thing that was important to me was that I just covered up the mess that was underneath um, it doesn't have to look amazing it just has to do its job um, I think when I do the next one I'm gonna make it just a smidge shorter um, I thought I would like it actually brushing the ground kind of like a um, drapes curtains but um, it kind of bothers me so at some point I may take this off and and turn the hem one more time but uh, for right now I just want to get another skirt on this table so that's what we're gonna be working on today so the first thing that I do um, I like to make a band for the uh, top of the table instead of, um, I guess, well, anyway, I like to make a, a kind of like a, a banded skirt like you would wear. Um, I, I measure for the band first. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure the length and width of the table and then I'm also going to measure the drop. So let's do that. To cut out the piece that's going to be the um, this band and this is an inch and a half so this is just folded so three inches right an inch and a half plus an inch and a half and then I also do a half inch that I turn under for the hem so you have to add that twice also so a total inch for the hem 
and then three inches for the band means I want to cut a piece four inches by a hundred what did I say 180 inches wide and my bolt is not I think that's like 55 inches wide so I'll be cutting a few pieces of that um, so that's the first part okay so this bolt is 55 inches wide plus the selvage you know which is this little you can see it you can see it better here but it's this this little bit right here um, so what I'm gonna do is use um, if you don't have one of these I would suggest next time you have some some fun money to get one um, this is a 24 inch ruler and I use it all the time. So I'm just measuring four inches. I don't know if you can see it. I'm just measuring four inches up from the bottom because I've already cut this bolt. I know that this is a straight line. Um, if you didn't know that, you would want to straighten it up before you started cutting fabric to like exact measurements. Um, but what I like to do is just slide my little um, cutting mat down the length of the table so that I can cut with my rotary cutter um, instead of my scissors. It's just a better, I, I am not, I am not a precise person y'all. I mean, look, I, I'm just keeping it real here. Um, but I still, <laughs> I still love doing all this stuff, but you're never going to be like, oh, Susan, make me a dress. Like, that's just never going to happen. But I know what I can do, and I can definitely do this part. So um, the rotary cutter and this straight edge of a quilting ruler, for me, is quite helpful. So if you don't have that, and of course you need a, a cutting surface underneath. Um, so those are three kind of must-have items that I would put on a list and I'm going to link to resources in the description of this video to um, just to let you know what I have and what I think is helpful. All right, so let's get to it. to show you because I can't add. I had said 180 inches, but if you add 60 inches plus 60 inches plus 30 inches, that's 150 inches, not 180. Um, so this is 55 plus 55 plus 55. So Again, not great at math, but that's 165 inches, so that is plenty. All right, so let's just measure, let's say right here. And then when I go down, that's 27, I don't know. I feel good about saying 27 and a quarter. So that would be the finished amount is 27 and a quarter um and then if i add a half an inch for it to sit in the um, waistband and then another half inch at the bottom to turn the hem under that's 20 28 and a half inches for the drop and then i'll just measure the width of the table um, to figure out, I want, can you see my hands? I want two big panels at the front and then two big panels on the side that wrap around to the back. So it's gonna be 28 and a half inches plus one, two, three, four. And I'm gonna measure that again real quick. Twelve is 72. All right, friends, let's do our math. What's 72 divided by 2 is 36. Right? Right? Yes. All right. 
So now I want two big panels in the front that are 36 by 36. And remember, again, we're adding, a lot of people do a quarter inch. I like a half inch. I just like it a little bit wider. Um, do what you want. But, but just remember to add your seam allowance um, on both sides every time. So that would make my front panels um, 37 inches wide. And then this middle panel, it doesn't have to be precise because you're not going to really see it. So I just did like, oh, we'll say 10 inches. Um, so two 37 inch panels in the front plus the 10 inch panel that's going to be hidden that kind of hides in my, um, I don't know, whatever that word is, pleat, not a pleat, seam, I don't know. Okay, and then I'm going to come around here, Let's see if I can pick, but the heat press is super heavy, so it makes it hard to move this. Um, let's just come around here, and again, we don't have to be super precise with this one either because we're just wrapping around enough where I just wanted to, I didn't want to see it end here at the back of the table. I just wanted to wrap around. Um, I don't know. It wouldn't be the end of the world to just end it here, especially with this. But regardless, we're going to go with it. All right, so I'm going to wrap it to about here. Let's see where we are. 36 inches. That's exciting. Um, so do two more panels 36 plus 36 and again I like something right here another little inset panel um, so 36 plus 36 and this will be like it doesn't matter let's say six all right so let me write that down and add so we're doing four panels at 37 inches are the ones that are the big ones that you're going to see in the front. One panel at 10 inch and one, two panels, which are our corner panels. That's seven inches. That's a lot of fabric, friends, but thankfully, I'll tell you the story of this little um, bulge right here. So my mom wanted to get two chairs recovered. And she and I went to Mary Jo's in Gastonia, which is closed now, which is just still very sad to me. I can't really talk about it that long, but um, we went to Mary Jo's. She found this and ordered enough. And I can't remember the yardage, but I mean, clearly you can see there's a massive amount of fabric still left on this bolt. Um, special ordered it, had it shipped, and then ended up going in a different direction. And we both just kind of mourned the waste of this fabric. And so she gave it to me and said, just, if you can use it, just figure it out. But the problem is I don't really, I mean, I don't mind this pattern. Uh, it's just not my taste. So, um, what I'm ending up doing is using the back cause I do like a neutral kind of oatmeal color. Um, so it's working out, but I do hate that she spent all the money on this fabric and then never used it. But what do you do? That kind of stuff happens. All right, so anyway, okay, I'm gonna, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut four panels at 37 by 28 and a half. I'm gonna cut two panels, which are my corner panels at seven by 28 and a half. And then I'm gonna cut one panel, which is the middle, the inset middle panel at 11 by 28 and a half. My bolt is 55 inches wide. And when I take 37 inches out for the big panels, I still have 18 inches. And so that's not gonna generate a ton of waste. And I like the idea of the panel being one big piece instead of me having to make a seam down the middle. So. So, we have a game plan, and I'm gonna get to work. three 
pieces cut for the fabric for the um, whatever <laughs> uh, the waistband for the skirt and then I've cut four panels well I've cut four lengths of fabric and then we're gonna cut seven panels out of that but I'm gonna go eat lunch first and then we'll we'll do that quickly piecing these uh, waistband pieces together. Does not have to be beautiful or perfect. Would be nice if they just stay together. That's our goal here. together. Now we just need to get get one more one more piece of the puzzle right here. So remember right side of, right sides of the fabric together. So you want the outside to be facing out. That's the part that you don't want to see in the finished Okay, perfect, okay. perfect is a strong word, adequate, this will do, backstitch a little, backstitch a lot, and then off we go. Okay. Happy. I like little pieces and things you don't want to be perfect about. Okay, so now, now we have one hugely long skinny piece. So our next thing to do, remember this is going to be the waistband. So what I like to do is first iron, well here, first I iron the center seam, so I just fold it in half and I just press along the length of this thing, and then once that part is done, I will open it up and turn over my half stitch. Now if I was an overachiever. I would turn it again and put that raw edged all enclosed when I stitch, but guess what? I'm not going to. For one thing, no one will see it. It is a table skirt that is only for my gratification. And also, it's just one extra long, long, long step. Maybe if I'm feeling ambitious, I'll do it in the big panels that drop down. But for right now, um, yeah, I'm just turning it once. So, okay, we're folding it just exactly in half and just getting a beautiful center line. it's time to turn those edges and I like to use this little guy just as a guide right now can you see that oh I can't see it right now he's on a fourth I'm gonna scoot him up to a half and this is just how I guide my um, 
fabric make sure I'm turning it over accurately so okay just showing you this is what the inside of the waistband looks like here is what it looks like at a seam I press I just finger press the seam open and then press these and the next thing I want to do is fold it back since I already had pressed you can still see the line of the center I'm gonna refold that okay so now this is all ironed up um, nice and neat and ready to go I'm gonna um, fold it up and set it aside and start working on the pan okay I just wanted to show you I've done the, the three panels that'll be the inset panels and when I do them um, I just turn it once and do a zigzag stitch um, and I'm leaving the top raw because remember that's going to be inside of the band so you won't see this at all. Um, so now I'm working on the big, the four big panels, the 37 inch panels and again I'm going to leave one of the long sides raw and then I'm turning these um, the other three sides just one side one time over um, so yeah I'm not gonna film all that but that's what I'm working on right now okay all of the panels the seven different panels have been stitched up and here is my waistband for the table skirt um, I just folded it in half to find the center which I'm just gonna mark with a straight pen and then it's time to start assembling all the pieces hard to show you the full skirt um, but it is here I tried to kind of drape it across the bed <laughs> for you to see it so what we're doing now um, this is the center seam um, so what I will do is take um, E6000 this one it's kind of old uh, it's pretty beat up <laughs> um, but I will glue and, and on the other one I did big pieces probably like five or six inch pieces because the nice thing is when you do it that big it's it's forgiving if you only do like a one inch piece of velcro then you got to get it exactly right 
So what I will do is glue the, the soft side to the table and I'll do it in the middle and then halfway between the middle and the end and then I'll do it on the corners and then I'll do one in the middle of the short side of the table and then I'll come around and do one more at the very back so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine different places that there will be velcro which sounds like a lot but honestly this is a big piece of fabric and you don't want it um you want it to be able to not have any kind of uh, swag in the middle any any drop and the way to do that is to do um to evenly space your velcro um I'm just looking through what I have and making sure that I have enough to do all that. The instructions on the glue said to let it cure, I think for 24 hours. Um, so I didn't even try to install the piece until the next day. Um, so I'll do that again this time too. I've done as much as I can, look. I cleaned out that E6000, took that thing apart. Ta-da! I do like, see how this one is still kind of low? I actually scooted it up, um, but I like this one because it's down, but it's not, there's still a little bit, you can't see anything, um, but it looks so good. It looks so much better than it did. I'm gonna see if I can find some before and after pictures to show y'all but this is like light years better than it was so hooray now you can do it too it's it takes some time um but it's certainly very doable so let me know what you think